Hi everybody, this is Sir Pierre, back another day with another more shopping video. I've been thinking, well, first of all, <laughs> I comment on an old picture of this car, and people thought, or they asked me if I bought a new car, which I have, but it's not this one. I've had this one for 10 years. Uh, I got a bunch of great pictures of it. I have a video that is not good with bad sound. I hope this is better with the dead cat on it. But I've been thinking of doing a video about my love of the, what I call the 90s SL, the R129. And it's not correct to call it the 90s because it came in 89 and lasted to, until 2002. But I honestly think from the bottom of my heart that this is one of the most beautiful cars ever. And it, it is the absolutely best car that Mercedes-Benz have ever built. So yeah, I have much love for this car. Uh, one of my dearest memories was when I came home from school fifth grade so I was about 11 I think and my father opened this garage and he showed me a black SL it was uh, the first generation so it was with the sucker plank as we call it so it was black and gray but I got so happy as a little child that I cried tears of joy and I even remember the very first time I saw the, not even the concept, the concept skiss, the concept papers, writing of this car. So yeah, I have much, much love for this car. And it feels maybe weird to do a video about this car when it's winter. It is still winter, even if I live somewhere where we very rarely have snow, but it is still winter, it's cold. But the first three years I had this car, I drove it all year round, until I realized that maybe it's a bit shame to do that because it's a really nice car. This car has actually been voted by uh, MB World Forum as the finest R129 in the world. Yes, some people might not like the wheels. I absolutely love the wheels. But this car is in mint condition. So yeah, I felt that it was a bit shame to use it in bad weather and winter. Yeah, it is dirty today, but still it looks good. And uh, the, the point of it is, is that I very rarely, even, even if I only use it during the summer now, I very rarely drive it with the roof down. It is a convertible, you're supposed to drive it with the top down, but I very rarely do that. And one other thing, I think it looks better with the hard top on. I love the square or, or the straight lines. It looks like it's been drawn with a ruler. I really, really like this look. And with the hard top on, with the roof on. So, to get to the point, this is going to be a long video, I just realized. To get to the point, um, I really like the hard top on. It would be cool to have the panoramic roof because if I had a panoramic roof, I wouldn't take it off at all, I think. I wouldn't drive with it all year round. I'll try to keep this short anyway. So, I really like it with the panoramic roof. This is a late 95. It has all the upgrades for the 96 facelift, which we in Europe call the 96 facelift. The people in US, I think they call it the 95 facelift or maybe the 97, I don't remember but we call it the 96. So it has everything except from the five-speed transmission. And um, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't. So anyway, 
is an RA5. And sometimes you can see the panoramic roof for sale. Uh, they are very expensive, very. In Sweden, they cost, no, I think even in US. Uh, for a new one, they cost, they charge you $20,000. In Sweden, I think it's like 24,000. And you can more or less buy a whole car for that kind of money. But, uh, so, people claim that the panoramic roof that in U.S. came 97, uh, that it only fits the 96 facelift. And since my car has the 96 facelift, but not all the things, I have been unsure. And when I ask people, they claim, no, 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 it's only 97. But as, as far as I know, they didn't do any, any huge difference in 96 to 97. Uh, so yeah, there was a roof for sale. I, um, it was way up in Sweden. So I was going to take a chance drive up there and see if it fits or not and the seller was really weird and when i was halfway there in Göteborg, i was it's like three and a half hours from home he said that he will not be home um, i will need to ask my no he will ask his neighbor to open the garage door for me and i asked well is is your neighbor young and healthy more or less can he help me lift the roof? Because the roof is very heavy, 115 kilos. And he said, no, you will have to ask him when you're there. So I just turned, turned my car around again, went back home. So when I got home, I realized that if I'm going to have the panoramic roof and be sure that it fits, I'm going to need a newer SL. And I think the best years are 96 to 98, as I call them those years, when you have the M19 engine with the five-speed transmission. I think those years are the best. That's the best combination. When it gets the M13 en engine with only 306 horsepower, and the car got heavier, and so that car is not as sporty, it's not as fast, but back then, or after all those years, they realized that people buy the SL as a GT car, a comf comfortable luxury convertible, not as a sports car. And if you want a sports car, you can buy an AMG. So I need to get a newer one. And I liked the best years, 96 to 98, but those, looks like my car and the only difference is the transmission and maybe that the panoramic roof doesn't fit on my car so if i'm going to have a newer r29 i want the last model the latest year the last year and weirdly the panoramic roof were most popular the first year, 97. So at least we can say 97 to 99. After that, it's very hard to, count, hard to find SLs with the panoramic roof. And I sort of understand why, because if you live in a country where, is, where the sun is out all the time, you want to drive with the top down. And the panoramic roof is heavy, takes a lot of space, and it will damage the interior if you do so there are a couple of downsides to it but i think it looks so cool it's, it looks so good and it was a very expensive option even when the car was new so an sl with the panoramic roof that's the ultimate sl but uh so the later models that i've seen because if I'm going to have a newer SL, I want the last year. 
So the last year here in Europe was 2001, we had the final edition. Uh, Garage 11 uh, has one that is very nice, but it doesn't have the panoramic roof. So that was the two things that I wanted. Last year and panoramic roof. So yeah, I'm gonna keep on talking. Uh, I want to do a better video. I've asked for help, but that will end up sometime. But the thing is, I'm doing a surgery tomorrow and I won't be able to drive for six to eight weeks. And I have already shown pictures and everything. So, and I've, I have blog posts about it, yada, yada, yada. So I thought I can might as well show you here. So to back again a bit, the last year in Europe was 2001 with the final edition. But when the new one, the R230 came, uh, the Americans thought, hey, we like the better, we like the old one better. So they made the Silver Arrow edition, which is very rare. And so that's the final year, 2002 Silver Arrow only sold in US, 100 of them were sold in UK, that's it. And with the panoramic roof, they are very, very rare. I have not seen, I want to say that I haven't seen another one at all, but let's just say there are five of them. I don't know. I have a post about it, but here we have one. So here we have the 2002 the last year of the R29, the Silver Arrow with the panoramic roof. I'm gonna show you the whole point of the panoramic roof. You see? So it feels like a convertible all the time, more or less. And this car, is so so beautiful very low mileage um, in miles i think it was fifty-seven thousand. i think in metric miles it's uh, used about eight thousand uh, metric miles so yeah beautiful car if i could choose i would choose maybe another color uh, something more fun, green, or I don't like the red, uh, green or yellow maybe. Uh, but because I, I thought silver was boring. This is my first silver or gray car. I haven't had any silver gray cars. People thought my old SL or LS, Lexus LS was silver, but it was green actually. But this color, 777 is the color code, is much more beautiful live than in pictures and video. Much. In this video, uh, like this car is blue. I don't remember, remember, remember the name of that blue, but this car is blue. But they look, on video, they look more or less the same. So a very nice car. So that's why I have two R29s. The first one, I looked for the perfect one for, I don't remember, I would say my whole life, but let's say 10 years. And I found it. And then I wanted the last year with the panoramic roof. And it more or less took me 10 years to find that as well. This is very, very rare. So uh, that's the reason why I have two of them. The point of this one is to drive it more, even during winter and autumn and whatever. But I don't know, I need to drive all my cars more. This one, I don't know if you can see it, has just been standing for several years, dusty. And yeah, I have two, uh, two Corvette C4, more or less for the same kind of reason. I wanted a C4 since I was a teenager. I had a CR1 when I was very young. 
and I wanted to find the perfect one in mint condition. I did. When I find that one, the green one, I thought it was too perfect, too good to do any modifications to it. And then I found a G JDM Corvette. So I have two Corvettes and two SLs, which is my 90s collection, as I call it. 95, 95, 96, and 2002. The only complaint is about the 99 facelift is that it looks much rounder. And here with the newer AMG package, it looks even more rounder. But with the roof on, you can't have the same angle on the panoramic roof. That only looks black from outside so it's much softer softer line on the roof than on the old one so the old one absolutely looked better i'm going to in the future uh, test the panoramic roof on this one just to see if it fits or not um, but I'm not going to sell that car and have a panoramic roof on this one. I don't know. Let's see. It's not good to have cars that you can't storage anywhere. Yeah. So this is my uh, latest more shopping video which is really only because of lack of other videos to do. And I'm doing surgery on the right leg tomorrow. I'll be lame, maybe, I don't know, for six to eight weeks, won't be able to drive. So that's why I wanted to show you the cars or the, the new one, the old one I have already showed you. I have great pictures um, to show you in my blog post, yada, yada, yada. And I want to do a real video about the R29. I have a long, long, long post that is over 10 years old. And I have a good post about the Silver Arrow edition as well. Today I'm just talking about a, a bunch of crap. What do you think about them? What do you think about the R29? And... Um, which one do you think looks the best? I can say one more thing in this short video that is probably half an hour now. I adore these wheels. I've had them on several cars, both my Lexus LS. And yeah, these wheels are also better live than in pictures. Uh, I first thought that they were really, really boring, but they are not actually. And these wheels shows you that the car is on a silver arrow, but wouldn't it be cool to have those kind of wheels on this one as well? But since the plan is that this is going to be more daily, uh, daily driver, uh, more comfortable, uh, I'm thinking I'm getting 19 inches on this one. Here we have 20 inches and this car is uh, lowered with the AMG shocks and widened, which you probably can't see. But maybe now when we have the comparison. So uh, the modern one could probably fit 20 inches better than the old one. But I think 19, it's 18 on it now. I don't know, I don't know. Just for fun, maybe I should just go with 19. What do you think? Let me know. This video is probably three hours long now. I'm probably gonna say something more as well. And no matter how the car looks, they're just wonderful to drive in every way. Fast, sporty, comfortable, and 
everything. No complaints at all. I had my first uh, R129 was a uh, 600 with the rear seat, the kinder seat, children's seat that is completely useless. And that kills sort of almost two centimeters of the, being able to pull the seat back. And that made me dislike the SL for a while uh, until I drove one without the rear seat. And then it, there is no complaints at all. It is very nice to drive. I highly recommend you to buy uh, R129. And they are just getting more and more expensive everywhere in the world. And this is the best car that Mercedes-Benz have ever built. Without a doubt. The facelift model, it is nicer with the five-speed transmission. It's more, um, it always does a kick down and it's uh, easier to just roll down, roll slow. And I like the thicker steering wheel as well. But what a wonderful car. I love the car. The reason for doing the video today is because I can't have them all in a perfect garage. And uh, in this garage, I can't have them charged. So every once in a while, I switch places on some of the cars to keep them charged, the battery. And since, uh, since they are now all going to be standing still for two months, I feel like this more modern one will take that better. We'll see.